All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from a very sunny San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Sarah Williams, who is in, I am sure, an equally sunny Los Angeles, just up the road. How are you doing, Sarah? I'm good. Yeah, I was just enjoying my lunch out on the uh, shared communal uh, patio, uh, getting 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 a little bit of my my tan on this afternoon. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> gorgeous Southern California day. Yeah. So apologies to people who live elsewhere, but I did grow up in, in Ireland, so uh, you know I've done my time. Come on, I deserve it. <laughs> I grew up in Colorado, you know, scraping the yeah. ice off the car, and yeah, yeah, we've earned it. <laughs> exactly. So, um, so Sarah's an on-air host and actress. And what we're going to talk today about is a really interesting subject, one I'm sure which maybe some of you are familiar with, and I would say a lot of you probably aren't, and that is shoppable live streams. So let's dive straight in, Sarah, and just explain to the audience, uh, to those who, who, don't, uh, who haven't heard of it or are unfamiliar with it, what shoppable live streams are. Yeah, what is what does that even mean, right? Um, it's 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 kind of what it sounds like, right? It's a live stream that is Shopify, so you can shop as a viewer while you're watching the live stream. So a lot of people, when they think of a shoppable live stream or like live selling, they think QVC or Home Shopping right. Network, and that's not necessarily wrong. But live selling and shoppable live streaming is really that like next iteration of it. So it's digital, it's on social media, it's on Amazon. So it's really fun. It's very grounded. Uh, you're not really coming in with like a heavy sales approach necessarily. You certainly can, but essentially you're building a community. You're connecting with your audience. You're offering brand and product education. You're answering questions live in the chat. That's a huge part of it, right? It's live. So your audience is talking to you, you're chit chatting, but they're also like, you know, what is the size of this barrel? And you know, how small is the small shirt? Uh, and you as the brand expert, right, are answering that in real time. So uh, viewers love it because they're able to make a more considered purchase, right? They have the convenience of shopping at home, but they're able to talk to an expert as if they were in, you know, a brick and mortar store and brand and retailers and businesses love it because, you know, you're able to offer your viewers a more considered purchase. So there's higher conversion rates, there's lower return rates, um, and it's such a great way to humanize your brand in, in a very authentic way. So in a nutshell, that's basically live selling or shoppable live streaming. Yeah, you know, it's fantastic. And it's really interesting because, as you say, I mean, with the transition to online um, purchasing, a lot of people doing business online, that's the piece that's always missing is the interaction. Yeah. And let's face it, most most online retailers have done a, how should I put this? Well, a, awful job to be honest with uh, engage you know with engaging or humanizing or making or giving people that uh, that sense of somebody that they can engage with yes. um so so when you when you do these when you do these um, shoppable live streams what are some of the really key components to the success of them yeah so i like to think about a live stream having these kind of kind of four pillars and you can lean more heavily on one or the other on on your various live streams but one is obviously sales, right? You want your viewers or consumers in this case, right, to be able to purchase in the live. And so that's possible on a lot of, um, you know, social media platforms. Mm -hmm. There's also other just like apps that do live selling and some of the, you know, retailers are starting to do their own live selling, right? So that's, of course, the very obvious piece is sales. But then, as I kind of mentioned earlier, you also want to offer brand and product education. And you want that to come across pretty organically. So again, it, it doesn't have to be like this, you know, five minute QVC style pitch. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's long form. We're going to have a conversation. Here's what I like about this product. You know, this blender works really great for making smoothies. I made my smoothie with it today. Here's the motor. You know, this is what's powering it. Here's the voltage, right? So you're really offering that that product information and brand information, right? You can tell your brand story by, by saying in so many words, this is a brand, what we, what we stand for. And the other part is this community building. So if you start live streaming regularly, you're going to build a community. And so you're going to have your regular viewers there and you're going to chat with them about, you know, their kids, baseball game over the weekend or what everyone's going to do for the 4th of July. Um, and then, you know, they're also talking about the products and the demos and what they want to see and, and engaging with you. So it starts to feel 
really authentic, really fun. And then people who are tuning in for the first time or just casually watching as they shop now feel like, oh, this is something I kind of want to be a part of. This is a cool thing. Uh, so it's, it's kind of a blend of all of those things. And as you're crafting your live stream strategy, of course, you can lean on different pillars in different moments. So, you know, let's say it's a new product launch and you want to generate some excitement, right? And so it's, it's going to be all that like product education and, and brand story. Uh, let's say, you know, you, you got to do a closeout sale because you got a ton of product just sitting on the shelf. So, hey, this is this is a sale. It's a deep discount for the life only. Come, you know, buy it right now. Um, so basically, you can look at live selling as a tool and you as a brand or business or as a retailer can use it, right, to make sales, to connect, to tell your product story. And I, and I guess one of the things is that the, especially the generations coming through, they have very much grown up on this. I mean, they've been doing this forever with their live stream gamers and my, yes. my, I, I mentioned you know, my son's an actor, but he also works out. So he follows these bodybuilder type people on live streams and all that. And and most of them sell product, right? Because they, mm -hmm. you know, create supplements or whatever. So, I mean, I think this is something that it's, it's very comfortable for them. And I think the rest of us are starting to learn about it. But it, it, it's definitely something that they are, they, they're already very comfortable with. So it makes sense for brands to start doing them. They're very comfortable with it and they crave this like authenticity to it. So especially like Gen Zers, it's like when I look at, you know, super great is a, is a platform and app for, for live streaming and community members who um, just want to be involved can also leave like product reviews, but everything's video based and there's no filters. There's no anything like that. So, you know, people are leaving reviews of, you know, cosmetics and skincare products right out of the shower in their messy, you know, bathroom and, you know, no makeup on in their bathroom. Um, and, and like, that's okay. And, and not only is it okay, like that's kind of what people are craving. So, you know, yes, young people are loving it, but also like leaning into that authenticity. It doesn't have to be totally sparkly. It doesn't have to be fully, fully produced to still be uh, an effective live stream that people want to engage with you on and, and consume and purchase your products from. Yeah. And the other thing I think is because uh, I, I think this started ha to happen pre pandemic uh, anyway, and that the pandemic just accelerated it is that yeah. I think I think people were starting to get tired of the dehumanization of their commercial experiences, you know, whether it was B2B or B2C, but how, you know, how technology was moving from being an enabler to being this kind of wall, if you like. And yes, mm -hmm. you know, you could get your get your stuff through the window, but you never know, you never get behind that wall to see what's going on. And I think the pandemic really accelerated that where people go, no, I, I, I need to know what's going on. I need to know who the people are, what they stand for, exactly what you were saying earlier. Yeah, I think it also made it okay to be a little messy, even as an individual or as a professional. I mean, you know, it's like the, now it's just like the, it's not even a joke anymore, but like, you know, can you hear me? Am I on mute? Like, oh, I'll be right back on my Zoom. You know, and, and uh, I, I know a lot of people that are heading back to work in professional settings are excited because now, you know, the women can wear sneakers instead of heels and it's, it's a little bit more relaxed. And I think that's just the way that, um, you know, our culture and, and the world is sort of moving at, at this moment. Um, and so the, you know, the content and as businesses and hosts and all of that, how we connect with people and consumers should, you know, should match that. That's that's what the people are wanting right now. And, and I guess part of the thing is, uh, if you're thinking of doing um, shoppable live streams, I guess the first thing you've got to figure out is what the personality of your of your brand is, or what you want to communicate about about your about your brand and your organization. That is true, and also like who is going to represent you on on camera. Mm -hmm. So, you know, viewers love uh, founders. You can always do like a you know salesperson. You know, you can keep it within the organization. Uh, you can always go outside the organization and hire someone like me that's more of like an on-air host and has that sort of experience. Um, you can work with influencers, other content creators. I think the one really important thing is when you're kind of thinking about who's going to stream for you or who that talent's going to be, you just want to make sure that not only are they comfortable in that live setting, but also that the, at the end of the day, they're brand and product experts. Um, mm -hmm. Because, you know, the big of, of not the big, but a big part of live streaming is being able to answer those questions in real time. So kind of what we saw in the 
sort of the beginning of the pandemic when a lot of bigger mm-hmm. brands were kind of getting on board with live selling was they have some celebrity come and, and you know do their live selling and people would be asking like the same question in the chat and they couldn't answer it because they're just there to kind of be a celebrity and say what they like about the mm-hmm. the product rather than you know really being able to, mm-hmm. to sell it in that sense so that's just something to keep in mind but i think also you know live streaming is so new um i mean it's been in China for years and years. And to your point, like it's been around, but I think it's, it's new to the mainstream. And so mm-hmm. that's kind of a gift because if you want to launch your live stream program, there, there's not necessarily just like a specific roadmap that you have to follow. So you can play, you can dabble, you know, um, I really like the approach of just testing to learn, you know, launch and learn approach, um, see what works for you as a brand in this new form of communication and sales channel. Um, because the other the other thing too is I'm not sure people realize. I mean, people probably think that this is quite a huge undertaking, probably very costly and all of that. But to your point, I mean, there's there's many different levels you can go in at. I mean, you can always evolve to that if you want, or you can say, okay, I'm going to go hire somebody like yourself, Sarah, to to do this for me. But yeah. I mean, there's multiple starting points, right? There's so many starting points. Yeah, and you know. Um... I I think it's smart to kind of start small, especially if you're a smaller company or smaller brand and, you know, don't have an unlimited budget and, you know, unending resources. But, you know, social media, a lot of the social media platforms now have the availability for you to live stream on. Um, So, you know, everyone has an Instagram now. And if your e-commerce site runs on Shopify, there's a pretty easy, like, direct integration. You can create a storefront on um, Instagram and sell your products right there. And Instagram takes their little piece. But, um, you know, that's a, that's a great place to start. And literally all you need, right, is a phone and a tripod. And you can have just one person do it. It's nice to have a co-host, right? I'm sure you know from the podcast, it's nice to sure. keep it conversational. So you can always bring on a guest, like an influencer, yeah. someone who's using the product, someone from within the company. And just, yeah, test it. I think something, something I think is important and I would advise people on if they're going to start dabbling in live streaming is try to commit to doing it like once a week the same time right that way people start to know where to find you they can start tuning in um and then you're going to learn as well because it is such a new uh type of content creation it's going to take some testing to figure out what works for your brand and so if you kind of can keep that consistency and keep it up for like six months i think that's when you really start to see the payoff but you you can't expect i think to just do like one live or two lives and you know oh we didn't have any sales so i guess this doesn't work like it really it's 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 a grassroots approach right now yeah and unfortunately i think with everything everything always takes longer than you would like um but i think that's a it's a fair point because you know a lot of people start i mean because i know um, right now we have the you know the explosion of podcasts like everybody's everybody's podcasting and yeah. and I see a lot of people like they will start a podcast and maybe they'll do two or three podcasts and then they and then you see a long gap it, because people are expecting instantaneous results and it never works that way. It never does. It never does. So yeah, but yeah, I mean, who even are you right now if you don't have a podcast? Like I'm using <laughs> podcast. I should probably pick it back up because like. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah you got you know you got to give it the good good college try and then you know once you get a little more comfortable with it and once maybe you're playing on different platforms then i think you'll just naturally have an interest to be like oh maybe i should get an external camera um maybe that would be really cool and i can buy one mm-hmm. like the one i'm using right now for 100 bucks mm-hmm. on amazon yeah. right um oh yeah you know the ring light's kind of blowing out my product packaging and the touch screen so Maybe I'm going to get, you know, another little lighting kit and so I can have mm. some really nice indirect beauty light that's going to make the products look good. So I think I think that um, build up of the technology and even the softwares that you can use to live stream, like broadcast softwares and things like that, it's not something you have to figure out and do right away to be successful. And quite honestly, on like especially the social channels, I don't think viewers and consumers are even expecting that. They want it to just be on your phone. So, you know, that that's a nice little excuse for all of us to go in and keep it simple on ourselves. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I cuz I agree with you cuz I think the the craving the authenticity Although I wish people would stop with Instagram ads because I find them addictive and I have to stop myself buying stuff that I don't need because they're so addictive. <laughs> that, and then all the kids it's like the TikTok made me buy it, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm a bit yeah. I'm a bit like that with Instagram. No, I I, I, I discipline myself a little bit better. <laughs> but, it's a new infomercial. Um, 
<laughs> it, it, no, it really is. It really is. So, um, do you, have you have you worked with any B two B companies, or have you? Because I mean, obviously, you know, there's tremendous application in the in the B two C space. Uh, have you seen this work well in the B two B space? Um, and you mean for like companies that are, I guess, selling to other question. companies? Yeah, selling to other companies. I I haven't seen an adaption in that way really. Um, the closest I've seen to that is like live stream software systems or like yeah. white label platforms that, that do like edge like it's but then it's almost like a webinar, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, where they're like trying to sell their live stream software to someone mm. else. But I, I don't know that having it be like a shoppable live stream or like a live selling moment makes sense there. I think that really mm. is more of like a webinar, um, more of like a sales pitch. Um, mm. I can't imagine in the B2B space you're often wanting to connect with dozens or hundreds of you know, potential customers at once. I mean, maybe, maybe you are, but um, I would think it'd be more effective to have a slightly more curated and personal approach there. Yeah, absolutely. But I would certainly say for, as we touched on earlier, for small businesses, for entrepreneurs, I mean, this is a great opportunity because as you said, you can position yourself very quickly as an expert in whatever the product does. And, you know, so you're obviously an expert, you should be an expert in your own product, but whatever the product yeah. does, so then to you for that kind of advice. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Being, being that expert, being that person that can help, you know, um, a consumer get the most out of their product or their experience, you know, and doing like demo based content works really well on live streams. I think that's why we're seeing such a wide adaptation of live streaming in the beauty space, because you can sit with someone and let me do, you know, do my makeup with me, get ready with me. Let's do our hair together. Uh, because it, it just lends itself well. You're using the product, you're seeing it in action. You know, it's a, it's a very compelling before and after. I hear that a lot. Like, I know you didn't edit it because I've been watching you for the last 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, so anytime, you know, and, and, and also obviously like cooking products do really well with that, right? You can create your own little cooking show. So um, yes, I, I absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, so what would be what would be your advice to somebody who said, OK, I, I like what I'm hearing here. Um, I, I want to get started on I want to get started on this, uh, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I have the right personality. I'm not sure if I'm the right person. I'm not sure if I know how to do, you know, all of those questions. You know, the way we love to go, let's do this. And then you go to do it and then you go, I've no idea what I'm doing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> oh my gosh, maybe go. <laughs> Excuse me, let me have a sip of my tea. That was funny. Um, I think if you know if you're an entrepreneur or you're you know working for a really you know smaller business, I think you just kind of got to get in there and just do it. Um, you know, I will be very honest. Even with like <laughs> more medium-sized companies, it's like with those first couple live streams, especially if you're not like driving traffic, it's like I got fellow employees in the chat with me. I got my mom and some friends. <laughs> like that's totally okay. You know, and that's a great place to start and kind of work on this craft and figure out what works for your storytelling for your brand and your products. But yeah, you just, you just kind of got to get in there. I would start with the path of least resistance. So if you're already on a social media platform where you're able to live stream, you can absolutely start there. Um, I think the you know, the highest level really of like live streaming is, is really like a full integration into your e-commerce site with probably like, you know, treating it like it's its own sales channel. So you would have like mm -hmm. dedicated staff, you know, working on this live stream in a studio space or something like that. But that's something you can grow to. So, you know, if, if you have an Instagram and you have Shopify, then, you know, just integrate it there and do your live streams on, on Instagram. There's also a ton of platforms out there, like Super great is one I mentioned, Talk Shop Live, Live Scale, Shop Shops. I mean, there's all these apps just popping up that allow for shoppable live streaming. And so, you know, if you're if you're especially hesitant and you're like, I don't even have anyone in the company who I want to be on camera. And I don't know if we have a budget to like pay for a dedicated host or someone to come in and do this for us. You can work with some of those platforms that work with live stream influencers and you can mm -hmm. see them, your product, and they can live stream kind of on your behalf. I mean, it's going to be a multi-branded live stream, right? Because they're probably going to talk about a lot more things than, than your one or two right. products. But that can be a great way to kind of dip your toe in it, um, get familiar with the channel, the platforms, the technology, all of that. Um, so that's that's like the, the easiest way to just get in there. I think the only thing that's important to remember in that case is 
the content you're producing at that point, right, it's UGC. So you're not co quite going to have that same product expert brand story approach, but that's okay. If you're starting out, that's still a great place to start. Yeah. And and I guess the other part too is, um, I mean, most people, especially if you're an entrepreneur or a small business person or whatever, I mean, you're used to talking one-on-one -on -one with people. I mean, you're used to being very persuasive. And I guess at the end of the day, what you're talking about, these shop shoppable live streams, they come off often as very personal. It's like you're, it's you and me, even though there may be whatever, a thousand people on the stream. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And even when, for instance, like I'm streaming with a co-host, sometimes I have to remind them, I'm like, don't forget you, you and I aren't talking, we're talking to the viewers, right? Mm -hmm. So we're directing our, just our language, our verbiage, our energy out towards them. So yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. And, you know, especially if you're, if you're the entrepreneur, if you're the owner, like, you know, the product better than anyone. And so, you know, own that yeah, yeah, <laughs> and you probably know how to sell it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Look, fantastic. Like this has been absolutely fascinating, Sarah, all of Sarah's information will be below this video, but before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Oh, absolutely. So yeah, I've been a, an on-air host for, for many years, an actor. I know we were chatting before about the old, the old Hollywood scene. i um, had the uh -huh. pleasure to work with just, just some of the best in the business. Um, yeah, Amazon, Fox. Uh, and then, you know, uh, when when COVID happened, I, I really dove deeply into the shoppable live stream space. It was always something that I'd done. I used to call it hosting for home shopping. I've been on QVC. But um, it's something I, I really enjoy. And so um, currently I work for T3 Hair Tools as their spokesperson and I program and produce and host all of their shoppable live streams. Mm. Um, partnered with them in February of 2021. And from February 2021 to February 2022, we did over 100 live streams. So um, it's something I'm really passionate about. I've learned so much. I've made all the mistakes, so you don't have to, you know. Uh, but yeah, it's it's a really exciting space to be in because it's growing so rapidly. Um, you know, some of the statistics I hear that are just bonkers is that you know by by 2026, 20 percent of all online sales will be from a shoppable live stream. So it's coming. You know, it's it's here. I think it's here to stay. Um, but it's exciting because it's quickly evolving. So there's you know, it's it's the time to test things and try new things. So. Yeah, ab absolutely. And like I said, all of Sarah's uh, information be below this at sarahwilliams.tv. Uh, if you're considering doing this, go check it out. Go check out Sarah and uh, and uh, maybe she can help you get off the ground. And you never know that you could be a pioneer in your field. So, you know, absolutely. Give it a go. Yeah. Reach out to me. I love to chat with people and just, you know, even if you just need some insights, some, you know, some encouragement, be happy to do that. But uh, it's such a pleasure to be here, John. Thank you so much for yeah, having me. Yeah, thank you. And thank everybody for watching and listening. And I'll see you all again soon. Bye, everyone.